Hi, Daniel. Good morning. Morning. How are you? <laughs> I think it's early morning, so let's wait for some folks to try in. <laughs> Yuri did confirm that he was going to join in uh, to kind of talk about Yuri Shukro to uh, kind of talk about um, some of the his thoughts on observability and hotel. So should be pretty interesting. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, I got to take a look at the uh, at the agenda doc. I just got back from a vacation. So. Ah, good for you. <laughs> Hope you had fun. <laughs> well, I'm unemployed, so maybe not so good for me. But you know, it was scheduled, so I had to I had to do it. <laughs> Are you are you looking to do some work in observability? Um, you know, I was. Uh, I think out here, uh, I'm in New York, uh, and I think the gravity is just towards fintech, which is where I've been for the last few years. So, yeah, you know, I've always been like I'm definitely more on the user end in this group. Um, so really, I'm just talking like fintechs and and larger kind of companies where I can do this kind of work. But you know don't have the expertise to actually participate really no no i think i think it's it's also you know like there's a lot of um areas where you know the end user uh and engineers you know end up kind of building out the usability of you know many of these core tools right so it's not only just building out the core features but it's also looking at overall you know how do you actually scale how do you configure uh, easily in many of the other areas so um again i'll, I'll ping you on chat and uh let's let's see chat a bit <laughs> sure we love it sure sure hi hendrik how are you good hi, morning. how are you good 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 let me just um pull up our doc and uh, as i was uh mentioning to uh daniel we have um Yuri Shukro joining in today for um, sharing some of his thoughts on observability. And as you know, he's been talking a fair bit about the six pillars of, you know, <laughs> telemetry data. So this should be interesting. Let me go and ping him. Okay, yeah, I think let's do a chat. Here's the agenda doc. Let's fill it out if you have any questions. Hi, Matt. Um, I think I I just pinged Yuri, so hopefully he'll join shortly. But um, just shared the link of the doc. Let me um, just share our screen. Okay, so we have, and we have the agenda.
we have KubeCon coming up next week. So I think many of us are going to be at KubeCon and uh, it should be fun. Uh, for those of you who are you know, in the area, it's in, in, in and around Detroit. Again, <laughs> I just found out that, you know, you kind of never think about it, but um, the Niagara Falls, I guess, or Canada is right across, you know, like walking distance or drivable somehow. <laughs> Although there is a lake in the middle, so I, but uh, for, there are some folks who are planning to kind of take a day trip uh, to Canada and back. <laughs> oh, this font is too big. There are lots of observability activities going on uh, at KubeCon, so again. It would be great to see the larger, you know, participants. Um, I think uh, a lot of activities around open telemetry, where typically I'm pretty busy or active. We have Yuri. Wonderful. Hi, Yuri. <laughs> Good morning. Hello. Hey, welcome. Uh, on the previous topic, really fast, uh, Alita, didn't wasn't there a poll put out? I've been a little out of touch. Uh, I've started a new, a new role, so I've been a little dark for a month until. Um, I kind of I'm doing some onboarding, but I do remember there was a dinner or a or a observability type an O tag <laughs> observability yes. meetup. Henrik, yeah. Henrik yeah, did you did you decide? Yeah, did you decide yeah, so finally? The, the first place where where they didn't take any booking, so I, I we picked another place. So it's on in the uh, Slack channel. I can and I can send you the the place, but it's going to happen as of now. If you want to come, uh, we have booked a table for thirteen people. Uh, so if uh, we have to adjust the uh, booking, let us know so we can adjust the booking. But the dinner will happen on Wednesday uh, of the week of KubeCon, and uh, it will we will basically meet at um, at seven p.m. But I will send the address on the chat, and then you have the address in case you want to join us. Awesome, thank you, uh, Henrik. I just noted it in our agenda uh, docs, but. Henrik, feel free to post any details. Okay. For the for the location, or you know, if they can, if folks can ping up, ping you, whatever works. All right. Hold. Okay, I think um, we can probably get started. Yuri, um, would you like to get started? Uh, again, uh, with great pleasure, let me just uh, turn off our sharing. Yeah, I have a slide deck that I can just share it to. You. Yeah, just, that would be awesome. Instead of just, uh, I guess. Oh, hold on. <laughs> talking to us. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but uh, again, for those of you who don't know Yuri, Yuri is uh, one of the uh, core maintainers of Jaeger, has been very, he's an ex subject matter expert in open source observability, has been involved in observability for a long time. He has co founded Open Tracing as a project and also is a core contributor and uh, co founder of Open Telemetry. So you know, again, very happy to have him here today. And uh, he will be chatting and sharing some thoughts about uh, observability and the seven pillars of telemetry. Welcome, Yuri. No, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, my name is Yuri Shkuru. I'm an um, engineer at Meta. My primary focus is um, observability platforms and products for, for internal consumption. Uh, and uh, as uh, already mentioned, I work with uh, Jaeger and open telemetry projects and open source. <clears throat> and I have a book on tracing, which is now three years old. Uh, so uh, today, or, or like uh, maybe a couple months ago before the profilers came in, open telemetry was essentially three pillars, uh, metrics, logs, and traces. Um, 
and there is some kind of noise about other stuff like events uh, but wasn't really anything official um, then there's also another term in the industry that you may have seen like melt that kind of adds the events to the to the picture um we, we have like exceptionally bad name events but I'll, I'll go over that um and then uh i think tomorrow with some of the uh, things that are starting in open telemetry we're adding uh profiles the events are kind of being discussed into like what exactly it means to to support events like we have span events we have some other uh events potentially in the login space um, and so I, when I was kind of uh, uh, discussing this internally at Metal, one of my colleagues came up with this temple uh, acronym. And then I thought, well, what if we do the full word temple? Uh, because the one signal that was missing in, in all the discussions are, is, is the exceptions. Um, and so I wrote a blog post about it, uh, link below, um, kind of going through. Uh, and that's what I, I, I will go through quickly here. And the sort of the ordering of the letters in the word doesn't mean anything it's really because the word is nice as temple but uh it's it doesn't imply any sort of priority or anything so i will actually go in a more traditional order through the signals starting with metrics and so metrics are as many of you uh, know like a numerical uh observations that are highly aggregatable we kind of uh we do support dimensions on them but we often drop those dimensions from the raw events and uh, aggregation allows us to drastically reduce the amount of data that we have to store uh, and at the same time sort of provide much longer retention uh, as a result because we can keep aggregating it even after the data is collected so like by compressing it into uh, like a lower granularity time wise lower granularity in the uh, in, in the space as well um, mostly though when we talk about metrics in 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 an open telemetry space we're talking about operational metrics and not so much about business metrics uh in fact like business metrics are typically more usually collected from like in the form of structured logs rather than the actual traditional sort of like time series thing and one thing that metrics are great is for monitoring because they're highly accurate they don't lose precision with the aggregations uh well when done correctly like uh you can of course aggregate average of average but like if you don't do that then you you get a, a very good numbers uh but they generally consider to be fairly bad for troubleshooting because as a, with aggregations we lose dimensions uh and so you kind of you know there is a problem but you know where and why and so logs is is like the very classic way of troubleshooting systems uh and there are uh several categories of logs like then structured is the classic printf style uh, freeform text logs um with semi-structured sometimes you sort of like you can consider semi-structure in the uh, thing that timestamp or like a log severity can be isolated as a separate field of the log or sometimes you can even do well give an api to the users where you say just log random events uh in uh, in in sort of like in a structured form where you give names to the dimensions right and so you can have region as a dimension or you can have a customer id as a dimension that kind of makes it um semi-structured but i still separate it from fully schematized like fully structured logs where you actually go with a schema first approach and uh something similar Th that is much more prevalent in the business analytics uh logs uh where you you define the schema up front because it's really you're thinking not just about yourself as the producer of the log, but much more about the consumers of the of, the, of those logs and uh, how it, it all affects the consumers. Um, one super nice feature about logs is that they are very local to a specific uh, resource emitting those logs, and so they are very easy to shard from sort of capacity capacity management point of view. Like you can, if you have a service, you can build that service, and this is how much log volume you're consuming, right? Um, uh which is not as easy with some other telemetry types um and but at the same time logs are very generally expensive and so you kind of give this uh knobs to people to say you can you can do various severity and uh various retentions and all of that and one other thing about look because they're localized they're they kind of hard to correlate across the architecture or even within the node right when you have i don't know uh 1000 qps on a service uh, all your logs come as a single pile of of of, of like consciousness uh, right and, and it's very difficult to make sense of them without introducing some other mechanism which really come from tracing um, and those so tracing is um is also you can think of it as a special form of log but structured and uh request scope logs right or more generically i think i i prefer to call traces a, a workflow centric logs because 
uh, request kind of narrows you more to the RPC space, whereas workflow opens up other avenues of, of logging where you have, I don't know, uh, CI CD pipeline, which isn't really working on RPC, I uh, think, or the, the messaging and, and data pipelines where the workflows may be well defined, but they're not RPC based. Um, and the critical thing that separate logs from uh, other tele telemetry is that they capture causality in the form of a direct acyclic graphs uh, between the events that constitute the given trace. Um, in, in contrast with logs, so the traces are distributed and as a result, they are actually pretty difficult to, to um, apportion to specific services in terms of capacity usage, because uh, the value of tracing comes from the fact that they span a lot of different components. And so who do you build for that? Is it like the first service that started the trace that made a sampling decision? Or do you build the service which says, oh, I'm going to add like 100 spans to this trace, big, all my internal spans, and that affects everyone else, right? So that cost, uh, I have not seen a good solution yet to this problem in the industry as how you properly sort of like build uh, internal billing. I'm not talking about uh, sort of like a vendor billing. Um, one unique feature that traces provide in terms of monitoring, people don't often think of traces as monitoring, but they do give you end-to-end -end monitoring capabilities, which are just impossible with other telemetry types. And the simplest example is uh, a message delivery uh, front-to-end timeline, right? Because you have to collect those measures at different points in the architecture. So all other telemetry types are very localized uh, and traces are unique in that sense. But there's all other kinds of use cases that for traces that uh, not like fully explored in the industry today, like root cause isolation is probably the most uh, frequent people think of, uh, but there is also uh, the uh, like some of the big companies that I know, they they very effectively utilizing traces for resource attribution, uh, for like for product line attribution. Something that's again, very difficult with other telemetry types. And now I mentioned that event is a, is a super bad name because technically all telemetry starts with events. And so uh, when we talk about events as a, as a distinct telemetry type, we're really talking about change events uh, primarily, although you could extend that notion to some other stuff like, I don't know, weather events or, I don't know, big uh, football game in the town and that might cause a, a traffic spike, something like that, which might be interesting from the operational perspective. But change event is definitely the most important category here because they... Uh, very often uh, are responsible for over 50% of outages in many organizations. And, uh, and by change events, I mean like code deployments, configuration changes, maybe some like routing configuration changes, uh, even some auto, auto event like auto scaling could be considered a change event as well because they're not that often, uh, although that like kind of start, starts to blend the, um, the boundary work. And uh, in terms of shape, events are just nothing but structured logs, right? And so uh, a reasonable question is like, why Why do we consider them separate uh, telemetry type? And my reasons for, for considering them is because they actually have very different requirements. One of them is um, events have very strong identity. So meaning that if your service started throwing an error of, I don't know, some specific error message, right? It's probably going to do it like thousands of times. And so if you lose 5% of those, no one cares. You still get a strong signal that there is a problem of this type and that you can go and localize it. Whereas with events, if you did the deployment of a specific code commit and you lose that uh, as a telemetry platform, then you kind of in a bad situation. You may not be able to troubleshoot your outage um, for much longer uh, if you didn't lose that event, right? So like the much higher reliability requirements. And uh, on the other side, it's like, yeah, so when we're looking uh, for, for events, like with logs, we're not looking for specific log instances usually. We're looking at a more like aggregate view of them. Uh, whereas with events, we're very often looking for a very specific instance of an event um, as part of the troubleshooting. And as a result, they also tend to be much lower volume than the logs. Um, but, but that's not always the case though. Depends on, again on how you characterize what an event is. Um, now the profiles are coming into uh, open telemetry. That's that's great to see. Uh, <laughs> they had a bit of a hard time, like even dis describing what a profile is in the OTAP. Um, uh, I think the current definition, I, I I call it, you know it when you see it. Really, uh, I mean there is a definition, but it's 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 um, it, it's still pretty vague, right? Um, in my 
personal experience, I've noticed that profiles are usually much lower usage than the other telemetry types because they're kind of a power user tool. Like even though most engineers do come across profiling tools and some, some you, sometimes you do have a performance issue and you want to look at that, but it's not something that you do every day. Um, unless you are like a dedicated performance engineer and whose job is to go across multiple systems and kind of do this type of investigations. Um, and one unique feature of profiles is that typically no instrumentation is required to collect them uh, as far as the way that we think about like open telemetry instrumentation, whether automatic or uh, manual. Profiles are just like uh, the collection uh, frameworks for profiling are usually integrated with the runtime itself. And so you kind of get it uh, out of the box. Um, and they tend to generate much larger volumes uh, because there's like a one profile that can be pretty large if you if you capture a bunch of stuff. Uh, the one thing that is I think people don't often realize is that profiles are actually very well aggregatable, and and that's actually is a huge power uh, when you do on the, like a, a consistent real time profiling. Uh, or what's it called? What's the name? Um, always on profiling, right, in production. So it's not like every second, but you kind of consistently taking profiles from production. Those things can be aggregated and give you a lot of uh, useful information about uh, sort of like overall impact of different things. So um, I, I worked with organizations where they are using this to be able to sort of attribute these things even to the like a pull request when you have a pull request. And I say, oh, you add in this change in this function and this changes your sort of like a, fleet-wide CPU consumption by this much percent, right? That's the very awesome power of the profiles that you can, you can so like you can immediately see the performance degradation, even that you are sort of like authoring step. Um, but I like I think this is not a prevalent kind of at least experience from 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 what I've seen. Um, and finally, the exception that's the one that I, I think uh, is completely missing from the open telemetry discussions today. Um, and on one hand, again. Uh, the boundaries between the telemetry types are kind of blurred. You can always find sort of like exceptions, but uh, and and exceptions are as a form of very like super structured logs. They technically are defined in open telemetry protobuf format today uh, in in some way. Um, but the the sort of like we didn't pay much attention to the processing and specifically to the SDK uh, impact and collection because one of the things that uh, when I first time I I ran across Sentry. Uh, in production, Sentry was like an open source prof, um, exception capturing uh, thing. I was just blown away by how much information it gave me. As so of like, I got a ticket from some other team saying, "Oh, we seen this uh, problem from Jaeger SDK recent release in Python." And they, in, instead of a stack trace, they gave me a link to the Sentry, and like it took me like like one minute to identify the root cause because I was able to go and see like for every stack of the frame an exception, what are my local variables? So I could reason uh, like greatly about like what was going on in the application. Uh, of course, like uh, overlaying it with the source code. Uh, but this is something that uh, as, as a sort of like as a debugging experience, I don't know of any other telemetry type that allows you that kind of debugging. Uh, and it's almost like very close to actual debugging when we put a breakpoint, all right? And, um, and so that that kind of that's why I think that exceptions deserve a special sort of like a letter in in the acronym. Uh, they're also uh, aggregatable because uh, it, it's very common uh, when when you do have a well established like uh, exception processing pipeline. It's very common to look at aggregates of those, saying like, "Oh, I'm I'm seeing a new type of exception suddenly popping up as as a time series, right?" And the way those pipelines work, uh, they are very special. They sort of like they look at the stack traces. They sometimes do all kinds of uh, clever things about fingerprinting them, maybe like collapsing some of the stack uh, frames that are not interesting so that you can identify uh, unique, but also like a common patterns in those stack frames and, and then do the sort of grouping analysis and show them uh, in, in aggregate. And as a result, they also tend to have custom UIs and I should have added custom SDKs uh, because again, the way that the Sentry and its Raven SDKs are able to collect this sort of like the information about exception, that requires a very special SDK to be integrated into application. Um, so that's basically uh, all I have as a conclusion. So like uh, my point of this blog post was that there's like really more than three pillars that people typically talk about uh, that the the temple uh, maybe will will get adopted as a, as a term because I think it's awesome. Um, then the boundaries between things are, as I mentioned, are pretty diffuse. You can like you've seen that a lot of stuff can be classified as an event or as a log, uh, but with all kinds of caveats. And 
And of course, these are just telemetry. This is the data pipes that we're talking about, right? We're not talking about actual observability solution. That still has to come afterwards to aggregate all this stuff. Um, and one other thing I want to mention is like I have a talk at SRECon next week uh, about uh, another uh, thing that we published uh, uh, a paper on schema first application telemetry. So the, I mentioned like a highly schematized and structured logs. So we are kind of taking this approach from the logs to all the telemetry that we produce. Um, and I will be talking about that. And then that's the wrap. Awesome, awesome, uh, Yuri, this is very, very cool. I mean, in fact, um, it's actually very valuable to have a more precise and focused discussion around <laughs> telemetry data and, and types itself, because uh, typically, you know, it, it gets munged into a much larger context. So thank you so much. Uh, Matt, did you have questions? Um, more a humble request, uh, if there's time or if you're if you're able to today, uh, could you provide like sort of the next layer of detail on the paper you mentioned around schema first stuff? Um, we have as part of the tag, a Linux Foundation um, internship going on right now, presently, that's about a month in uh, to, to generate uh, ontologies uh, for Kubernetes and a couple other ancillary uh, workloads atop Kubernetes uh, in the service mesh space. It's a collaboration between the networking tag and observability tag. So I'm kind of curious, just if you could uh, uh, give us a little overview, if, there, again, if there's time and, and if this is the right space. Uh, you mean now? Uh, yeah, but I don't want to put you on the spot. Like, or even oh, if I, just kind of like. I can, yeah. Yeah, I can actually, like, I, I'm preparing for this every talk as well. So I do have that. But uh, I think um, on a high level, uh, what we are proposing is essentially um, a schema first approach is, is, is the opposite of a code first approach. So most of the telemetry type today is produced with the code first, where like I, I just write some attributes to, to an SDK. Uh, and that's my source of truth about what the shape of telemetry that I'm emitting, right? And that provides absolutely like no metadata about what that telemetry means to the consumers. Uh, it has no safety in terms of like, if you change it, are you gonna break your consumers? It doesn't give you any information about, well, I'm, I'm writing like uh, a number as, as, a, as a latency. What is the units of that number, right? So those are like very common problems that uh, kind of stem from the lack of metadata about the telemetry, right? And the approach to metadata, like schema first is not the only approach. And so this is what the thing that we discussed in the paper is that there are other approaches, um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to show you another sneak peek of uh, maybe. Do you see that? Not uh, yet, Yuri. Okay, uh, let me share the screen. This one. Um, yep, you can see it now. Yeah, so <laughs> this is kind of a very busy slide, but. Uh, <laughs> We, we sort of contrast uh, a various different other approaches in the industry with, with like how, how well they fit our goals for, for sort of like knowing the metadata about telemetry, right? Um, and some of them like a semantic conventions and open telemetry or open telemetry schemas. There is also like vendor approach where they just automatically enrich uh, telemetry that you collect with sort of like infrastructure dimensions, which is uh, actually, you can see that it's pretty green across the board, except that it just doesn't support certain things at all, mm -hmm. uh, right? Like uh, any custom dimensions, you can't do that custom metadata. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, so, um, so do that. this is what basically the, the, like the gist of the paper. We kind of go through what is our approach to schema first. Uh, I think at Meta, uh, there is a, a, a very, uh, important aspect of the cultural change that uh, occurred already several years ago, where it was, I think, with all the kind of privacy and other like big data requirements, which was that as we produce the like all of the warehouse data, we really have to start with schema first, right? So it's a very established already. It did not apply to application telemetry. Um, and, and that's what we're introducing. We're saying, yeah, the same approach schema first works for application telemetry as well. And in general, it works much better across, like you can see here, it's mostly green across our uh, evaluation criteria uh, at, at the expense, slight expense of the de developer experience. But we have already a bunch of tools in that area that actually make it not, not too bad, um, that, that, that change in developer experience. And sometimes we even treat it as a valuable so the fact that, yeah, you have to stop and think about the schema that you're producing rather than just nearly really writing what you want, uh, because 
again, data is about consumption, not so much about production. Uh, and and uh, a very typical view on telemetry is just, oh, I'm just going to throw stuff in and then uh, somehow telemetry platform is supposed to make sense of it and, and give me like great uh, solutions to investigate outages. And it just doesn't work this way. Yeah, well said. Well said, you. I think uh, taking a user standpoint is super important there for all producers. Oh, pretty cool. So is, uh, the, is the paper available? Uh, I, I see it online some places, but there's like a get access link. I think I might have to pay. Is it is it available publicly anywhere yet? Yes, it's available in Facebook research. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, you can just go to the website and there, download yeah, it. Could someone just drop a link? I can look for it too. Uh, yeah, let me copy the link. I mean, the, the D, uh, DOI link should work as well because I think it's you can just. Uh... Oh, awesome. no. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, let, let me... Daniel shared it, Yuri. Okay. On, on the research page. Yep, that's it. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks. I actually can't wait to read this. Yes, should be actually very interesting. Very cool. Uh, Yuri, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's really nice to have you on, uh, you know, uh, joining in the tag meetings. And and uh, again, I think, I hope that, you know, with all the activity that is ongoing in OTEL uh, right now, a uh, lot more work can be actually done around, you know, thinking of how to also correlate across some of the data types that you just talked about today. Typically, you know, correlation is left also up to the user, uh, also up to the uh, tooling that, you know, a service may provide. But on the other hand, I mean, what are your thoughts about, you know, pre-aggregation uh, and, and um, you know, kind of correlating some of the data before it even hits a uh, analysis service? Right, a telemetry service. And Yuri, do you, do you think that that's something that's um, you know feasible? I mean, it's feasible for some kinds of data and at some scale, but um, again, you know, as you look at profile profiling data, as you look at events, as you look at you know exceptions, uh, do you see you know standard rules that can be applied there for correlation? Um, at the collection layer before it even hits analysis? Well, I mean, this kind of the whole uh, point of, of, of our paper is that uh, you can, it, it depends on how you produce telemetry. You can, mm -hmm. you can do this through like with semantic conventions, which is uh, a way, uh, it's, it's a weaker way than we would like. Uh, because it just like doesn't meet some of the other requirements that we have, but but yeah, that like if if all of your telemetry is compliant with the semantic conventions reliably, then um, that gives you like a power to correlate them, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, well, yeah, and and so like the semantic conventions are sort of a hard thing to do because they're centralized, and so anytime you you have something completely custom, um, I don't know. I mean, if, if I'm inserting, uh, let's say, uh, sort of like some sort of like a customer ID in, in my particular telemetry data set, and I want to say, yeah, that's the same field in my other data sets, uh, could you do it with semantic conventions? You can. Uh, it, it's, it becomes less clear, like, well, who is responsible for sort of like for data governance of that, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not going to be open telemetry because it's a completely customer. So you kind of need to stand up your own organization saying, like, this is my data governance for telemetry. And uh, uh, that's kind of problem is unavoidable because we also have that same problem with the schema first telemetry. But with the schema first, at least, that we provide a mechanism of how to do that, that mechanism yeah. actually can be decentralized. Uh, it doesn't have to be one single data governance organization, and it automatically recognizes. Like once you put it as a metadata in the schema, then our both our backend platforms and our sort of like a front end tools they automatically recognize it, and then they so you don't have to do the correlation at the at the ingestion level, uh, just that because the you essentially you you labeled your data already with with things that oh this can be these are the the columns that you can correlate on in, in, through the metadata. Mm -hmm. No, that's very that it's very helpful. Um, Daniel, 
did you have a question? And then it, Ryan. Yeah, I just I just want to clarify because I think I I think I'm getting what this uh, uh, schema. Um, sorry, I'm forgetting the schema first application telemetry means. But are you saying you know a, an approach basically where the event describe like the the interface through which you log the high level what we call like everything is an event uh, is unified, and then the event that you're logging that you're sending out itself. Um, uh, maps to a schema which describes the way you store and process that data. Is that what you're getting at basically here? Uh, yes and no. So the, the sort of unified aspect, I, I would mm -hmm. uh, downplay that because uh, that sounds a bit like a boil the ocean thing that we never try to do. Uh, so we do provide a, an incremental change to the APIs uh, for, for telemetry, but we do not try to consolidate them. So uh, a metric API will remain a metric API, right? It's and the, and the tracing is different, but we've built the common building blocks into those APIs such that when you define a, a, a schema for your telemetry, um, like in the protobuf or in our case in Thrift, then you get an auto-generated struct that you populate, which gives you all kinds of nice things about like compile time safety, like verification and all of that. Uh, and so that, that's what you populate and whether, but then that's still the sub uh, as like up to the uh, specific telemetry SDK, what to do with that struct. So like with metrics, um, we actually, our metric system is interestingly, is like different from um, the way that most metric system exists today in that it is more, like a table than uh, like a time series. So uh, in other words, so if you think about like your red matrix, request errors duration, right? Very often you see those as three independent time series is coming out of the application, even though they have the exact same shape of the dimensions attached to them, right? Because they essentially describe the same business process, just different measurements of that business process. So what we're trying to do with our uh, like uh, metric backend is say, yeah, well, let's just model it as, as this business process uh, as a table essentially, so that you don't have one single numeric value in the metric, but you have more than one potentially, a bunch of measurements, but all your dimensions that describe the actual instance of the business process or the event, they are defined once. And then on top of that, we have like a, a functionality to attach metadata to those dimensions so that then we can correlate it with some other type of dimensions. Interesting. It, it, I don't want to hold this up too long, but I am curious, you said you don't want a unified, like, and it seems like folks in the room agree that a unified interface is not a good goal. I'm I'm curious because what I've run into repeatedly is two questions. One is like a um, I have a situation and I deal with the app level mostly, right? Um, uh, I'm you know I'm writing you know mortgage system, right? Uh, you know engineer saying I need uh, to set an alert. I want a log line for context potentially, and then also the data team wants a piece of data out of this. And I'm logging, you know, I'm, I have like an entire function of just like data I'm sending out. Why can't I send one line that produces, you know, a metric and then from the same data produces a log line and also send something to the data warehouse. And from there, like teams have tried to implement their own unified logger and to see and that you can configure to, to send to different uh, um, uh, destinations. It sounds like you're saying this is something, or most people in this room agree, is a bad idea. Uh, maybe at a high level, could you say why? I don't think it's a bad idea. It, it's kind of, uh, it's situational. Uh, sometimes mm. it works. I know that uh, um, some of the companies, they publicly talked about those kinds of SDKs that they've developed. Uh, I remember the name Veneer from one of the companies, which is kind of this uh, single unified event API that you emit, and then behind the scenes, it can decide what to do, what goes into metrics, logs, traces, etc. Right. So that that makes sense. Uh, but um, I think that also uh, is uh, that's why I mentioned boil the ocean. We actually had a project like that once, and and mm -hmm. like we decided not to proceed because when you already have thousands of services, uh, kind of pushing that kind of unified API is almost like non-starter. This is like such a huge migration uh, that you need to force on people, and the benefits are not there for that migration. So uh, whereas what uh, we can instead what we can do is with the existing apis we can extend them with the schema first capabilities which already allow you to capture but yeah they, they like 
independent SDK still means that people are making this upfront decision of am I emitting a metric which will be aggregated and lose dimensions or am I emitting very rich log statement with all the fields right yeah that's that's sort of like an unfortunate side effect uh, which would potentially you can you can uh, get away from if you have a unified just an event API and, and let the infrastructure deal with how it's best represented in the telemetry. No, great point. Thank you, Yuri. You, Ryan? Yeah. Yo. Um, yeah, I kind of wanted to ask um, something you were saying earlier when you were kind of like going through the different signals. Um, you know, I've been working with the profiling group on the, yeah, on like the OTEP and that kind of stuff. And I would say, yeah, that a common, uh, maybe not necessarily concern or criticism, but just a common like thought or response that people have is that profiling does tend to be for like power users. And I'm kind of curious, um, cause I know you were instrumental in sort of like the beginning of tracing and that kind of thing, which from my perspective also seemed like it kind of started out as more of like a power user tool. And so I'm curious, like, do you see similarities between, you know, the way tracing was maybe, you know, three, four, however many years ago, um, you know, because yeah, like I hadn't heard of trait, like, I guess I'd used profiling before I'd used tracing. Um, but I also kind of, I guess, came later to the, uh, to the game. Um, and tracing tends to be more of, I guess, yeah, like kind of a, I guess more like a, at the company level, like you probably aren't tracing things locally as much. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious, like how you think the, the path of profiling, you know, sort of compares at this point, or if it's even comparable at all to, to where tracing was. Um, yeah, it's a good question. So one thing I think profiling actually may have a um, easier path than tracing into the day to day life, uh, because uh, a concept of profiling is still actually easier to understand for people than the distributed trace, because like trying to explain context propagation to someone who never heard of it is just it's a pain i've been through this like a thousand times uh, it, it's very difficult implementing it is also very difficult it was like with profilers you already have a much easier pass on the implementation side because you don't need users to do anything you just like you integrate with the runtime and boom they got the profile right um whereas with with like context propagation it's almost always the sort of application level instrumentation required uh, and that's a very big sort of roadblock to uh, adoption of tracing um and and so yeah like tracing because i i personally still think it struggles uh, to kind of uh, gain the sort of like mind share of engineers to say like as, as a valuable tool for various things and, and and like roi is really i think maybe one of the big uh problems for for tracing i don't think roi is a problem for profilers that's actually is way easier story for profilers um the um yeah but uh, similarities though is that um and oh, and I think another thing is profilers are just much easier to 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 make them work, uh, right? So I mentioned that uh, so like there's a value in aggregating profiles, and there's not a lot of technical challenges in doing that. Uh, whereas there is absolutely no solution in the industry today for proper aggregating of of traces. Uh, in so it's like there's no query language in existence that say I, I I can ask a graph based uh, question of the trace like actually using the fact that they are graphs right like tempo uh, DB is sort of like we came up recently with with a, some form of it it's not really even implemented yet but and it's not really how efficient it's going to be uh, whereas like that's not a problem at all with profilers you can uh, yeah aggregation is very straightforward there um, and and you can you can get immediate benefits from doing that. So I think it's like yeah, profilers. What the one challenge that I do see with profilers is just like um, uh, a vast amount of different formats. So the standardization effort will be potentially harder because with tracing, there weren't that many sort of there literally literally that that I've encountered only two data models that tracing systems use like event based and and uh, uh, span based. And the industry is completely converged on a span based. Uh, like some systems that, like Facebook Canopy, is event based, for example, right? Uh, some others are there like that. Uh, with profilers, from what I've seen in the OTAP activity, there is like literally uh, like almost what, like hundreds of, of yeah, different wow. formats, right? <laughs> There's so, a lot. And that, that, that's, I think, that that's probably the biggest challenge in the profiling space to sort of like doing the gap analysis and saying, 
what is and not possible in, in all different formats and is, if it's possible to sort of uh, come with a common one. Uh, I mean, Linux did was like you, you, if I trace profile or something, uh, trace format, I forgot what its name, right? But I don't know how well it represents all of the use cases. Yeah, interesting. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. No, very, very interesting uh, points. Uh, and especially the Linux, I mean, Linux profiling is the most well-known use case, right? I mean, of, of profiling, just, just because at the kernel level, it makes full sense to be able to do that. And also during, you know, just, just plain development uh, profiling, code profiling uh, from a familiarity standpoint. And the um, most ironic thing is that in Linux, it's called tracing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually profiling. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> All right. Um, I think this is this has been a pretty awesome discussion. And again, you're, you're very grateful uh, that you could join us today. Uh, again, looking forward to your talks. And, and again, um, at SRECon, as, as you present this paper, it'll be uh, actually quite, quite uh, a good discussion to have because it does change the you know, traditional way of thinking but it's actually very applicable when you are looking at uh, application, uh, more and more applications that are enabled with um, uh, tracing and and you know observability come into the observability fold. So uh, thank you again. Um, with that said, I think we are at time. Uh, Matt and others, did you have any questions or any areas you wanted to call out? Because um, we're going into KubeCon again. I hope to see many of you. There in person, we have a whole uh, set of uh, observability events going on, uh, one day events, as well as focused on uh, metrics, on tracing, on um, Prometheus, um, as well as open telemetry. Uh, and I think Yuri also has a talk on tracing. And um, Jaeger, uh, Yuri, did you want to share some details on your talk at KubeCon? No, I don't have a, it's a Jonas and uh, Joe. Oh, it's Jonas. Okay, okay. You're, you're, uh, I guess he's, he's borrowing from you. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, but thank you again, everyone. And Matt, any other words you wanted to add? Um, so I'll be kind of returning to public life, so to speak, um, or at least open, open source land um, uh, after KubeCon. Uh, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing folks there. Um, I think uh, thanks, Alita, for the last couple of months, kind of uh, organizing meetings and such. And I think uh, we're actually ending with three minutes to spare. So it's I pretty think, awesome. <laughs> I think there's a, you know, causality is, you know, not necessarily correlation. correlation <laughs> but, you know, um, but I'm expecting updates from you on landscape graph later at a later point. <laughs> so yes, that's been a little bit paused while I uh, on board in my new role, but I, I do intend to, to return to that. And um, if anyone is interested in jumping in, I know some people has, have expressed interest. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff there that's just waiting for new people to. There's a bunch of issues marked as um, good first issue and some help on it stuff with a roadmap. Uh, uh, check it out if you like or cool. read that directly. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I want to give some a couple of minutes back, but uh, thank you again for joining. And thank you so much, Yuri. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Well, next week.